Listener, I am uh, on the road. I'm in Vermont. So right now I'm, I'm going to do this without, without video. So you just get to hear <laughs> my torn apart vocal cords. From, why do I, I went into Russian there? Torn apart vocal cords from years of screaming at bottom. Scream at bottom. Destroy vocal cords. Eat too much. <laughs> destroy vocal cords. <laughs> oh, man. Happy Monday, Bottom Nation. Wow, I taped the special this week. Isn't that bananas? Wow, just the, the greatest thing ever. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see you guys in Chicago. There's a couple tickets left for the... We added. We kept adding shows because it sold out. So there's a couple tickets left for the Sunday show if you guys would like to come. And then we have like Tampa, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. We have Winnipeg coming up. Lots and lots of tour dates. So it's really helpful if you can go and sign up for my text alert or email alert. International, it's probably easier to do the email. All of this is on my website. And it's really helpful because... I'm actually going to send everyone an email and a text when the special drops. I'm very overwhelmed, but I'm hoping, I have hope that it'll all go the way I want it to and we can really, uh, we can really go mainstream with some of this gay humor, some humor and some humor from a gay person. Maybe, maybe make a bigger impact than just within our community here. And I hope this, this podcast reaches straight people and helps them. Uh, whatever, I'm rambling. Sorry, guys, I'm emo. I'm a little emo today. Uh, and today on the podcast of frequently requested guest, we have Allie Belairs. Um, I hope I'm saying that right. She's f***ing hysterical. I found out on the podcast she's an aspiring comedian. She is a comedian, and she's going to get on stage very soon. She's so f***ing funny, and she's so honest and raw and vulnerable about a previous toxic relationship and has some tips for getting out of those and how to, you know, kind of survive. I mean, it's such a great episode. We do not get any graphic discussion, but obviously if we're talking about toxic relationships, it might be a little bit of a like an emotional episode for some of you. So just be aware of that, particularly during Allie's story. Listener, this podcast is sponsored by Green Chef. Listener, are you a shitty cook like I am? Or maybe you're just busy like I am. Wouldn't it be great if you had a meal kit that actually had great options and could suit your dietary needs, was good for the environment, and was really, really delicious. Well, I'm talking about Green Chef. It is the number one meal kit for eating well. I love Green Chef because they've got something for me, vegetarian, with plenty of options, and they offset their carbon and plastic footprint, which makes me feel good about eating it. Go to greenchef.com gay60 and use code gay60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. That's greenchef.com slash gay60 and use code gay60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Listener, this episode is brought to you by OMG. Yes, I've been a big fan of this website for years and I'm so glad that they are now sponsoring the podcast. OMGYes.com is a website with findings from the largest ever research study into women's pleasure. Yeah, I know, finally. In partnership with Kinsey Institute researchers, they asked tens of thousands of women what made their pleasure better solo and with partners. And they found that the patterns in those discoveries, the physical techniques, the psychological techniques, all of that wisdom, they organized it and they put it on omgyes.com as some super honest videos, animations, and how-tos. If you want to spice things up or you just want to learn more about yourself, omgyes.com is the place for you. And I know a lot about vulvas, okay? My own and my main mains. But we went to omgs.com, and it really does feel so empowering to just, like, learn even more. Finally, some research out there. Go to omgs.com slash gay for a special discount. That's omgs.com slash gay. I haven't had hate sex in years, and so I, I fear that I'm going to sound a tad bit gay when I say that it's just so passionate. There's so much eye contact. And the sex is so good. Nobody's saying it's not hot. We're saying it's not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> like when I was a hey mama's lesbian, I mean, yeah, if it had a hole, you had to be careful. I, like you couldn't leave me with cantaloupe. <laughs> So I don't want to bring this up, but this is so funny. So I type in, um, we're having gay sex and then, and then I scroll around a little bit. No, I'm just kidding. No, I typed in your <laughs> podcast. 
I type in your podcast and the first video that comes up, this is so not cool for me to say, but I feel like I can say it to you. Um, the first video that comes up is your breakup podcast. Wow. That's rough. <laughs> that's I'm really like, rough. And I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I don't know this woman. No, I don't actually, need to watch her cry. No, actually, I thought it was really um, cute of you just because that is super vulnerable and you – on stage, you're such a dick, you know? <laughs> that, to, that to see you like that, I was like, okay, she has, there's a heart in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the dick, it's really funny, the difference between who I am on stage and who I am off stage. Alex knows, like, I'm a sensitive little baby. Yeah. I, I, I'm like a little teeny tiny baby. Yeah, um, Mas- masculine lesbians all over the world felt that one. Yeah, and and that episode, yeah, it was just like a little. I edited it myself too because I because Alex was new to the team. <laughs> You're crying watching it back. Yes, it was horrible. Alex was new to the team, and I was like, I cannot subject Alex to editing my breakup episode at his as his new as his like he can't see this so i was like i'm gonna edit it myself it was emotionally <laughs> horrible it was yeah. so rough it was so bad and no one knew we were broken up <laughs> so like on the internet on the internet i'm just like posting clips and dating this woman and in private i'm editing our breakup footage <laughs> no it was so fu- it was just the first video that i clicked because it, I thought it said a week ago. And so I was like, I'm about to get on this pos- podcast and she's still going to be crying. She's a shell of a woman. <laughs> she's no wonder she tears. was so upset in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so, and then I didn't realize that Allie even knew that I existed. And then Allie came to three of my shows in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Wait, oh my God. Wait, yeah, did you guys like, follow each other already? Uh, no, Ashley, Ashley still won't follow me back on TikTok. It's okay. Fuck. Um, no, Fuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, really, I do. I'm going right now. I'm going right now. <laughs> no, please. Yeah, I, just no, actually, I do not want a sympathy follow. I actually like, it's like a kink of mine that I have to work for it. <laughs> okay, okay, well, depending on how you do on this podcast, I will tell you whether or not you deserve a follow. <laughs> okay, thank you. Like, you know, because a lot of, here's the thing, a lot of, t- I, and you're funny, dude. Thank like you. just from this, in these fifteen minutes that Maddie wasn't here for because they're dweeb and fucking on the porch, a Charlie Brown Christmas. <laughs> I was locked out of my mom's house. house. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, what am I talking about? Oh, a lot of a, me. I've had you were talking many, about how funny many, I was. <laughs> yeah, many many TikTokers. I've had them on the pod. They cannot always hold their own in a conversational environment. And then a lot of people are like, yeah. <laughs> Full silence yep. rally. A lot of <laughs> a lot of people are like, why didn't you let this person speak more? They didn't, bitch. I was trying to get them to speak. <laughs> no, like and, sometimes yeah. I see like clips of like VidCon and stuff, and I'm like, is it so awkward? <laughs> you know what I mean? And people are like, VidCon, the subtitle of VidCon is like my first time outside. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking virgin. Are you a virgin? <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm not a virgin, but I'm a gay virgin. I've only slept with my her. my little gay bar. She, she, Maddie's our gay baby, our little gay, gay our little gay baby. I know. Okay. I'm new baby to gay. everything. That's it's okay. a big old world. Honestly, you do have a cherub with energy. To sleep with them. <laughs> You're like it's a I'm big world with so many people. Okay, how about you? F- one. No, I'm <laughs> I'm if it's so I fucking like big, just pick somebody. I love this, this energy that Allie and I are both like mean dykes and we're just ganging up on poor, poor men. Scissor, 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 scissor. <laughs> um, but we're going to interrupt you. We want you to interrupt us and you are already doing that. You're, you're coming in with the riffs and the comments and that's excellent. And I say this to every guest, but it doesn't always come naturally. And then my job is to boost them up as much as humanly possible. You know what I'm saying? And I, I will do three, that for you as well. I had three older brothers, so I know oh, how to interrupt. Right. So that's why you're gay. <laughs> um. Exactly. I tell people that all the fucking time. I'm like, that's the quadratic formula right there. <laughs> the quadrat. I try to get the quadrat gay dick. Form- <laughs> the queer dick formula. There we go. Queer dratic formula. There we go. We got it. Thank Excellent. You. 
You get enough. How many how many lesbian comedians does it take to create a lesbian joke? Three and one cis male straight producer. I love uh, watch. Uh, how you doing, Maddie? How was your day? What what got you locked outside, bud? I actually, okay, wait, this is actually a great story. I was on my way back home from getting coffee. I got this coffee for free because somebody recognized me from the fucking podcast. No fucking way! Huge. And they gave me a free coffee. I'm home in Huge. North Carolina. Wait, so my, it's so funny, the like headshot that I use for everything that I think is probably like, like my picture on Instagram is like me wearing a shirt from this coffee shop in North Carolina. And my friend was like, yeah, I like listened to the, po- or this girl I met was like, I listened to the podcast and then I went on your Instagram and was like, you're wearing the shirt of the coffee shop that I work at. <laughs> and then I walk in and they give me, so I won't say her name, but you know, shout out Open Eye Cafe and Carver. Thanks for the coffee. <laughs> I two I got workers. That's like never happened. Why not say her? It sounds, it actually sounds like you're some rich bitch. I'm not going to say this barista. I'm not going to say the name of this poor non-binary barista. I won't what? utter the name of a peasant, but um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't uh, know if she wants to be publicly whatever, but it was really, really nice. And I can't believe that happened. And then I was like, straight people listen to the, <laughs> was the like, podcast, yeah, Maddie. You're not outing the barista by <laughs> saying they listen to we're having gay sex. I just feel like in a small town like North Carolina, there's probably three rotating fucking employees. So like you say, <laughs> like you just saying the coffee shop name, like the lesbians will find that barista. <laughs> You're like, oh, Kai, <laughs> of course. It's either Kai or Kiosk. <laughs> um, well, this is excellent. This is a great start. We're going to do intros. Al, you're already a phenomenal guest. I'm so glad you're here. I feel like I know you because I met you three times in Pittsburgh. Um, you said hi once. Wait, three different shows. <laughs> okay, stop talking about it. I am. A f- I think Ash Gabs, it's like so cool. Not only women in comedy, you know, I'm always going to support, but funny to me just because she reminds me of me before I recovered from the Hey Mama's disease. <laughs> what the fuck? First like, of all, I'm like, that's what I would have been like if I didn't first, meet my wife. Okay. First of all, you have not recovered. Second of all, I am not a hey mama's lesbian. I have never, I have never. Th- you think I, bleh, like, I don't fucking do that shit. Are your nails well, I don't know painted what kind of black? Lesbian. Yeah. Okay, the nails are not good. <laughs> In this particular moment. So, okay, I was wait. also just noticing that. Here's what happened. I can explain. No, I'm not. I'm not doing this, that. Actually, this is, this is how much you're like not, I would not expect you to paint your nails. It's like, I saw like black on the tips of your fingertips. And I was like, I guess she went too deep on a bad day or something. <laughs> like, I don't know what that is. It's not fucking nail polish. <laughs> she gave herself an oil change. <laughs> 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 That's actually how they get oil. A lot of people think it's fracking or deep uh, deep sea rig. Uh, ah, deep sea. What do they call it? <laughs> I can't remember. You actually just go too deep inside of a lesbian. That's you guys, that, you guys think that, oil is Republicans. It's really the lesbians. <laughs> Ashley has a strap on called the pipeline. Ah, <laughs> air horn. Air horn. Air horn. Okay, we should do the podcast. Hello, I am Ashley Gavin. <laughs> Uh, cis, gay, white woman, she, her pronouns. I identify as having tour dates. <laughs> we are, uh, please sign up for my text list. It's obviously very important to me. And then as always, my gay virgin hall monitor to keep me from getting canceled. <laughs> are they a geek or are they a freak? This bitch is a freak and a geek. It's Maddie <laughs> Wiener. Hello, I'm Maddie Wiener. She, they pronouns. I also do comedy. Uh, I got a little Instagram. I got a little link tree. I'm popping everything on there. I'm writing Substack essays. And an email list. Get on Maddie. And an email list. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> That's really my vibe. I'm just happy We're to happy be here. To be here. And bring my I'm little glad you're here, Maddie. To the table. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> And then, Allie, do you mind introducing yourself to the people at home? Well, can you say something like you said about Maddie, about me? Can you be like, my sexy little ginger, not virgin? Okay, <laughs> you got it. Let's see. You have three older brothers. You dress like a hey mamas. You're in <laughs> denial about it. You're wow, this is not cute or fun at all. No, no, no. I'm, I'm trying to find. I'm just trying to find. Oh, I the thought bits. this was the thing. No, no, so no. So no, this I'm person dresses like this, and they're on TikTok and uh, get to meet them. <laughs> no, 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 no. I changed. We I'll do it myself. About, <laughs> we were joking about <laughs> earlier. I'm so glad this person didn't take themselves out. 
<laughs> so they can take you out. Just kidding. She's married. <laughs> Give it up for Allie Belair. I have whiplash. <laughs> hey, guys, it's Allie. You can find me, Allie underscore Belair's on anything and everything. I am a TikToker, but I am also a, a good person. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she she her pronouns. What else did you guys say about yourself? Are you are you cis? Are you a lesbian? Oh, I oh lesbian. Right. Well, I forgot I'm bisexual theoretically. <laughs> theoretically. <laughs> what did I want to say? Oh, I just saw something really funny happened to me on a date the other week, and I just want to share it with you guys. Please. Main Main took me to see jazz because that's something we do because I'm in my thirties. <laughs> jazz is horny jazz is so, so horny dope. jazz is like good jazz it's awesome dude mm-hmm. it's so fun it's really fun like yes. to what i love what because they're i relate to it because there's an improvisational nature to it you know what i mean mm, and right. they're also like it's a live performance which i can also super relate to it and when they get into flow when it, when a great musician gets into flow they make the weirdest faces and gestures, and I live, <laughs> I live for them. I yes. love seeing them enter their flow state. It's so cool. Is it like older people? Like no, older no, it's, jazz musicians. It's, it's a real people? mix. Like I saw. Um, oh fuck, I'm not gonna get the name right. I think it's Christian McBride, his band, which is a lot of young people. He's not so young, but everyone in his band is young. It's like the band is so cool. There's like this young woman who plays the saxophone and this young woman who plays the drums and then this young guy this young jewish kid who plays the guitar it, and then this pia- i mean it was just like it was just so cool how did you find out he was jewish <laughs> oh because his his name was like renan hirschberg i don't know who it was that's it, that's it. <laughs> they were playing jazz he was talking about being jewish it was great <laughs> he was he eating a bagel with, with locks on it, it. <laughs> Okay. He was up there lighting the Hanukkah candles. <laughs> you know, he had a yarmulke on and he was just shoving latkes into his mouth talking about how he hates spending money. Um, yes. just, but it was just, it was just cool. We said we got two Jews here in the room. Yes, yeah, Allie, don't worry. We're not. Who's we're not Jewish? I'm Jewish. We're oh, Jewish. I'm not Jewish. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> how do you know people's religion so well it's like you, you can, just look you can well you're you're from the south and you're living in pittsburgh so you don't you like maddie and i have had this discussion like you grew up in, in la a little bit i grew up here like there's just tons of jews yeah okay and they are not a lot of places is yes what i'm learning okay. <laughs> <laughs> um but anyway, so we're at jazz and the guy, this particular night, this particular show was not our favorite, but we still were having a lot of fun. It was like a Wednesday. We just picked a random thing and we were, we were at Birdland, which is a fun, a fun little venue. And, uh, the guy in front of us went solo. You know, he just came to watch some jazz. It was super cool. He was like really on his phone and his phone was really bright and the way that he was positioned, we could see him scrolling the whole night. <laughs> and then at a certain <laughs> No. No. Then at a certain point, he's scrolling Twitter and then just full ass. Yes. Like full <laughs> Like ass like ass. outside or like asshole spread seeing inside not of your asshole body. spread but like just the teeniest little amount of underwear like a woman <laughs> or a man a woman uh. honestly i gotta say i didn't <laughs> not enjoy it like it was <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things i love about dating this person my main man is we looked at each other like whoop that's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> and this guy is like a grandpa this dude is like 75 years old. I love that. And we were like, well, what is he going to do? Like, <laughs> so, because he's scrolling pretty fast. The ass, you know, flies by. Scrolls back. <laughs> <gasps> scrolls back to full ass. You don't oh want to miss God. that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Clicks on it. He goes <gasps> to the, he's reading the comments on the ass tweets. 
It's so funny to be someone who's like cultured enough that they're like, I go see live jazz. And also I get my porn from Twitter.com. I also think it's kind of cute that he wasn't just staring at the photo, that he wanted to hear what other people had to say about it. <laughs> he goes to the quote retweets. He was like, I just want to see what everybody else what is, is saying. What is, the, what is the discourse around this ass? <laughs> well, I need to see what the ass diaspora is saying <laughs> he was looking at other comments that were like i'm in a jazz club right now but i've got to look at this <laughs> <laughs> and it was just so funny because i don't know it was just like you're in public bro like i don't know it was just and it was so you're right it was so counter to what we were all experiencing in the room and i just felt it was just like it made the date even more romantic because i think we both kind of <laughs> It's like funny but illegal, right? It's a, that's illegal. Oh, that's a great question. Because it's it like illegal? to me, that's something that I would tell as the funniest thing ever that's happened. But I'm pretty sure illegal. It is interesting because it's like, and Maddie, Maddie's like doing the um, hall monitoring, trying to figure out whether or not we can, what's cancelable. I there's a court case where some kids in college were having sex in a dorm room, like right up against the mirror, and there was a whole thing about whether or not the mirror, the window, and there was a whole thing about whether or not that was private or a public act. And the, you, I I believe the court ruled that it was public. Do you remember when you found out that? like the moment in your life where you found out that having sex in public was a felony. <laughs> Do you remember that point in your life? I Cause I definitely remember that when I found that out, I was like, how are people keeping up with these? <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, it is, it is one of those interesting things where you're like, yes, if, if I were, if someone I know, cause I don't have a lot of, I'm very fortunate that I don't have like a lot of sexual trauma. Yes. Um, so if I saw people and I have seen people banging in public and it does nothing to me, like I, I'm like, oh, there are people banging in public <laughs> right. and then I like go on with my day. You know what I mean? Like, it, I, I'm just like, oh, interesting. <laughs> and usually, usually they're covering it up so you don't see it. Right. You know what I'm saying? He, but I was no. like, but I was paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> but I was staring deeply. <laughs> and if, and if you get the, uh, police, uh, st uh, uh, what do they call that person who draws the pictures? <laughs> oh, the sketch artist? The sketch artist. I could give you a vivid, a vivid description of all <laughs> genitalia involved. There was a um, wart on the left nut. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it doesn't really do much to me. So to me, I'm like, you know, but I know for other people, they might feel really triggered by, and upset by seeing something. But also you don't want to shame. Right. And also, like, it is sort of like a, if you don't get caught, then no one was harmed. Right. So it's like, well, then live your life, boo-boo. You know right. what I mean? Like, just don't get caught. Be careful. It's well, this really... What if you hard. were out in the middle of a forest? Sure. You know? And you were scared two that... two people fuck in the forest. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we the same no, do your, do your riff, Maddie. Your riff is better to your riff. <laughs> no, no, I like yours. No, it, it, no I like yours. <laughs> Oh, I, I don't know where I was going. I Mine was George. loose word association. <laughs> <laughs> I was well, like, that's like the tree thing. No, I was saying, well, I think the rest of your joke is if two people f in a forest and no one hears it, do they, <laughs> they really have sex? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, that is the ultimate philosophical question. And sometimes people talk about public sex on this podcast. And every single time I have this anxiety attack between not wanting to shame this person, not yucking a yum, hoping they're doing it safely in a way that it will not compromise other people, and then also thinking about those other people who might be triggered by it. So listener, yes. write in. As a host, what the fuck am I supposed to do? <laughs> I'll try to be more thoughtful of the trauma that people have. <laughs> Maddie, any thoughts, hall monitor? Can you fix this conundrum? <laughs> I just say follow the rules. <laughs> what are the rules. I don't know what they are. <laughs> yeah. Can you explain them to us? It feels like when it feels like when you go to file for taxes and it's like they you know that they know the laws, but they won't tell <laughs> them. like they know the amount. They just won't tell you the amount. It's like, how about you just tell me the amount? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I wish there were 
like I wish there were an IRS for other like more questionable things in life that they could, you know, you know, there's some sort of loophole pussy joke here. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, that's my honestly, I don't know whether or not it was legal, but it did make it more romantic because we were both turned on by the and we had the mutual experience of being like, oh, I love that my partner sees this ass and is turned on and neither one of us is jealous about the ass because I feel like don't you feel like a guy and a girl a a traditional a more traditional heterosexual cis couple you know what I mean the girl might get pissed at the guy for looking at the ass or the guy might get pissed at the girl is what I think that's possible too maybe the girl's bisexual or maybe the old man at the jazz club (laughs) is scrolling twitter and sees a massive (laughs) on the screen huge and the girl's like oh my god love that (laughs) and the guy is like I don't like that I can't believe what these straight people say that. Oh my god, love that. Yeah, have the straight. I'm pretty straight- sure that's. I think that's what all straight women say. Yes, I'm pretty sure. Oh my god, love that. Wow, nice. <laughs> nice. Wow, nice. <laughs> I like to think that this man at the jazz club though was just like a little guardian angel who, like, the second you guys were like, "Wow, that was a great ass," he just fades away into the distance. Like, my job here is done. <laughs> He's just there to kind of spice up lesbian date nights. <laughs> that's He's cupid. Like, I mean, like, what just fell across my Twitter page? Yeah, that's a modern <laughs> cupid. cupid. He's like the the equivalent of an old wise janitor from a '90s film, but he was, like, here to- <laughs> or like Santa Claus. He's like here to like, yeah. But yeah, and then I think we had sex that night. It's anyway, nice that you don't remember. <laughs> we have sex a lot. Oh, I'm, wait, I'm this very... is somebody who you're dating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought this was, okay, I'm not a good listener and I will do better. <laughs> no, 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 it's totally fine. If I shame you right now, people would be like, Ashley, that's mean to Allie. She has ADD. I don't know if you do, but it feels like you probably do. I have add and I also have subtract. I've never heard it called add, and I don't know what track is. Subtract. <laughs> ADD. Oh, oh that was such an ADD answer. <laughs> Sorry, we don't understand. We're medicated. <laughs> what are you saying, Alan? <laughs> Sorry, I can't hear you through my Prozac. What was that? <laughs> Allie, do you want to be a comedian? Um, You're very funny. I, that actually means so much coming from you, actually. Um, yeah, I think that would be a cool – that's one of my goals. Dude, that would be sick. I Why think don't you just do it? Well, I have, I've started going to open mics. I think there's just this um, pressure, not to dive too deep into it, but I think there's just kind of this pressure of when I do it, it seems like it has to be perfect because so many people are watching me, you know? Yeah, it's hard to start it when you already have an audience. Right, like, like I feel like yeah. if I fail, they're going to be like, it's like <laughs> people are going to know. Well, Allie, you can take your time with it. Like you don't have to make the the performance is public like immediately like you can wait a year or two before you want to start and you definitely don't have to start like touring until you like have your 45 minutes that you feel really proud of you know what I mean I think I've written so many I mean I've just like notebooks filled with it and I just you definitely I'm so like talking like a comedian thank you I appreciate that (laughs) I don't know what do you think think, Maddie I think she's no dude that's sick yeah no, you 100%. Are you living in Pittsburgh? I do right now, currently. Oh, hell you, yeah. You're going to have to leave if you're going to want to do comedy. <laughs> I, 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 told, I told you I want, we, we're not going to be here forever. Next year and then the next year after that will be two complete, completely days, different places. Well, you should move to New York. Like, that's the, the Be Real is going off. I just want to let everyone know. No. Oh, Be no. Real? Are you guys both on Be Real? I'm, I'm not. Be real. I'm not. Are you a Hey Mama's Lesbian. Only Ashley. <laughs> Ashley, Wait, post your nails on your Be Real. My nail. Oh yeah, I did last <laughs> night. I'll do. I'll. I will add you on Be Real, Maddie. And fuck Allie. I don't even. Oh, know. I don't have one. Wait, <laughs> Sorry, I just try to be real in real life. If fuck you know off. What I mean. <laughs> my Be Real is so fucking real. I rarely post, and um, I don't let anyone uh follow me. I only. I only follow like ten people. Oh, uh, you're oh. you're just like that. That's who you are. You're just so cool, and it's like it doesn't really matter, you know. Oh, you're the opposite of. I know you're being sarcastic, but I do need to clarify that I am not so cool, and everything matters. <laughs> <laughs> Literally everything.
Listener, I am on the go. I zoom, zoom, zoom around. I'm a busy gay and I'm not a great cook. So for a really long time, I would get home and I would have nothing in the fridge and I would end up making some unhealthy choice, which is great, but not again night after night. Do you find yourself in a similar position? For some reason, you're just having trouble getting it together. I recommend Green Chef. They are an incredible meal kit and they've got something easy and convenient for you. Okay, no matter what kind of dietary restriction you have, and I know you have one because you are gay, Green Chef has something for you. Whether you're keto, vegan, vegetarian, you are fast and fit, whatever it is, keto, ah, they've got it. And my favorite part about it is that it's sustainable. Their recipes feature premium protein, seasonal organic produce, and sustainably sourced seafood. They're the only meal kit that's both carbon and plastic offset. They offset 100% of their carbon footprint as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. And they have 30 weekly recipes to choose from. So much variety. You can mix and match meals. So whatever your weird dietary restriction is, it doesn't have to conflict with your girlfriend's weird dietary restriction. You guys can both have your weird dietary restriction and eat in peace and not argue anymore. And they're so easy to cook. I'm a terrible cook, but they taste delicious. And I absolutely love them because I'm also kind of a food snob. So if if they can hit both of those points, that's incredible. Go to greenchef.com slash gay60 and use code gay60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. That's greenchef.com slash gay60 and use code gay60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Green Chef, it's the number one meal kit for eating well. Listener, this podcast is sponsored by Calm. Calm is an incredible meditation app, and they have all different types of stuff. It's not just meditation. It's sleep stories. It's relaxing music tracks, daily movement sessions. They're all designed to help you improve your life because I know you've probably been feeling anxious or depressed or maybe just struggling to focus. There are so many benefits to meditation. I'm a frequent meditator. I meditate every day, and Calm has been a part of my routine, so I'm so excited to share this with you. Calm helps you stress less, sleep more, and live a happier life. And if you're feeling like you can't do it, you can. Over 100 million people around the world use Calm, and even if you've never meditated before, you'll get the support you need to reduce stress, improve focus, and uplift your mood. I can't say this enough. I know I do a lot of these, but this is one of the best things you can do for yourself, and if you start Just keep trying because it's all about the doing it. Don't worry about failing at meditating. You're going to be great. And I highly suggest that you start with Calm. If you go to calm.com slash gay, you'll get a special offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription and new content is added every week. For listeners of the show, Calm is offering an exclusive offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash gay. I know this is a little tricky to listen to, so if you don't see the banner on the YouTube, go to C-A-L-M dot com slash gay for 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library. That's calm.com slash gay. Um, Allie, did, I, I want you to become a comedian, and did you have gay sex this week? Thank you. Yes, absolutely. I think um, you for a moment I want to talk about angry sex. Yeah, sure. Like oh my God. fighting sex. Bro, I have had a, I had a real long run with hate sex, and <laughs> I am happy to discuss it. I don't talk about it often on this podcast, but hate sex was a big part of my life for oh, six years, I would say. <laughs> it's so oh, passive wait, I've never had. I've actually never had hate sex, but I've had like we're about to break up sex where you're like the thing of like the fear fuels you (laughs) insane i haven't had hate sex in years and so i i fear that i'm gonna sound a tad bit gay when i say that it's just so passionate (laughs) there's so much eye contact uh hate sex is i have so many theories about this but we obviously want to hear yours first so you were in a bad you were in a rough relationship or you like on again off again thing like all of what them. if you're like, it was my wife. Oh, no. <laughs> what if you know a wife whom I love so much? It's so funny because <laughs> my wife, Holland, and I have never had a fight. Not one fight. Huh. People oh. don't believe that a lot. Never one fight. So there's been zero. My current partner, I, I don't fight with. So I, I understand. Well, bicker, you know, it's really, yeah. Yeah, we don't bicker. I don't know what's up with that. So really? there's <laughs> never. Bick- bickering is sexy, though. Bickering yeah. is sexy. I think that you can chase. I think that Holland's so funny to me that I find that like I'll rip your clothes off right now. She like makes a pun and I'm like, okay, get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh Listen, your clothes are off. Okay. Wait, where are you sitting, Allie? Um, oh, I, sorry. I'm in the grass. 
<laughs> just outside of the grass. <laughs> no, I have this no. grass wall. Sure. Oh, in my house. W- why? Is it <laughs> real grass? No, 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 no. This is fake grass. I'm at my house. No, no, I understand that it's well, fake. I just, why did you make this choice? Oh, for a grass wall? I think wall? it's cool. <laughs> Am I getting shamed for my grass wall? No, no, I'm not think- grass shaming you right now. Ash is trying actually- to initiate hate sex. <laughs> you, don't like, you don't like a bush? You don't like no. a bush? What does this mean? I love a no, bush. No, no, I, it's just such a bold choice. I, it, I'm curious what. It is. I think it's going to look really good with a neon sign right here. And really, Ooh, yeah. I have it for my merch. So it's like a cool little backdrop for my yes, merch yes, and stuff yes, like yes. that. Okay, yeah. cool. Good merch plug. Anyway. <laughs> continue i apologize i just needed to know about the grass <laughs> it's killing you inside <laughs> no 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 i'm good i'm good i promise well, where was i at <laughs> i don't even remember That's what we we're talking about and you and your wife never fight no Thank so you, it's Maddie a lot of name. eye contact and passion and yeah <laughs> slow dancing afterwards <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> do you find that we do you, this is a question for both of you guys do you find that hate sex is the fight over but once you i have jokes and theories about this i don't think that if you're having hate sex uh, i think when you have hate sex you hold on to that anger regardless so <laughs> like you're yes. spiting somebody i agree so here's the thing about hate sex i think hate sex disguises itself as makeup sex you have a fight mm. and then you take all of that anger and you put it into the hate sex and this is almost verbatim my joke but what happens is you're not really working out anything. You're just shoving all of these problems into her <laughs> and it gets locked in an emotional time capsule inside of her vagina. Okay, why and are then- trust issues in her <laughs> 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 Um, So like that, that's what I think is happening is you can't, you're unable to communicate your problems. And so the physical aspect of the relationship is the only way that you can connect right mm. or it is a pure way that you can connect and, and i'm not saying this is true for everybody but this is what i've found that the sex and then the sex becomes the binding agent of the relationship <laughs> she's a scientist this is and, <laughs> this is a, this is a scientific reaction. method okay <laughs> but like and then you never work anything out and the sex is holding it all together and it becomes this like toxic situation I'm not saying it's so good. I'm not saying, yeah, so good. Nobody's saying it's not hot. We're saying it's not healthy (laughs) and it's like, it's been years, you know? Yeah. 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 And I used to think I would never have sex like that again. And I'd get really worried because I'm like, oh, like, why does the unhealthy sex have to be so good? And then I, you know, I've had a couple partners where I'm like, oh, this is like really loving and beautiful. And it is, of course, as good. No, I prefer better. I prefer yes. it. I think that's just embarrassing. Like when I was a hey mama's lesbian, I mean, <laughs> like if it had a hole, you had to be careful. I, like you couldn't leave me with cantaloupe. <laughs> My mom like wouldn't leave cantaloupe around me. She was like, um, <laughs> you know, definitely prefer it. But were you with a person that you had emotional problems with or were you just hate Because in order to hate you have to hate. So they can't be a stranger. You can hate yourself. I have hate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Every hate's a hate. Every hate's a hate if you hate yourself. <laughs> You're just like looking at a me- in into a mirror, masturbating. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I do love the idea that your hate someone but it's about you you're like you're ro- you're role playing and you're like okay you be me be like i hate mom like that like like i don't you're just a fire it's a fire sign thing you have to be a fire sign yeah exactly you be me and i'll be me and then let's beat the shit out of each other that's sex <laughs> nobody comes our clothes stay on <laughs> bruised and battered <laughs> So were you in a relationship? Yeah. So I've had, yeah, horrible relationships before Holland. Um, one one was way worse and it was longer. And then another one was just with like a straight girl in college, which shouldn't really count. But I was, I mean, I was, when I was single, I was, I was milking that cow. I was single. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was bad. I, I am like not proud. I think back about it now and I'm like so embarrassed about it. I'm like, why? You just, what? You were just slutting around that's okay nothing wrong with that that is the that is an understatement of what i was doing it's so <laughs> bad i'm like oh my god and then holland my wife what are we is talking? Just- no Allie, what are we talking we don't we can bleep this but like i'm a i've been a whore so like i'm curious what what you think is 
Uh, why are we, <laughs> why are we in the Zeta Tall Alpha bathroom with six of the Zetas? <laughs> Are you a slut or not, Allie? She held the crown. <laughs> Somebody said she held the crown while she went down. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. No, I don't like thinking about it. Okay, I, okay. I wasn't I, in, I, I wasn't in I a just, sorority, but I was in a sorority. A sorority. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But my, you were the sorority. I, I it was a lot of sisters. Uh, so, so I guess what I'm trying to say is I, I don't. You are obviously entitled to feel however you feel about your slut cha- phase, but I don't want you to shame yourself. <laughs> Freudian slip. Yeah. Well, that's coming out later. Don't shame yourself because there's like, there's no, you were doing you. You were, you were exploring. You were doing something. You needed to work it out. <laughs> I did. And as I long finally... as you're being safe and communicative, like, what's the issue? I yeah, think that's a fun time. I think that I was just really deep in the Hey Mama's Lesbian phase. And so when I look back at it, I'm like, you, young grass see my hop- listeners hopper. Just... <laughs> All the hey monolas are turning this off. Sorry, right I'm going to not We don't say need anymore. to be reformed. No, no, no. no <laughs> so wait. So then where did the hate sex... How is the hate sex related to the slut phase? Yes, uh, no, it wasn't. It was in those... I was in horrible relationships, like cheated on and hit in my first two. Oh, like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Actually... Well, no wonder you were having hate sex. <laughs> you can use this, but in a classy manner. My ex of like... I dated her for like two years, um, but she like... Had still will threaten me online and be like, will be like, you're, I'm going to cancel you. And she like hit me for two and a half years. And I was well, like, okay. it's <laughs> so there was a lot of hate sex in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry you went through that. No, it's okay. I can dodge everything now. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you can't fucking. I will me. say, when you've been in a bad relationship, like, and then you've reformed and you get into good relationships, it is crazy how quickly you can see. In someone else where you're like, oh, you're going to f*** me up. I got to get out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see those red flags yeah. fast, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's the root of my red flagness, I think. We, we lived at the red flag factory, so we know what's going on here. <laughs> I'm running. I'm actually running out of red flags now that I'm like forgetting. Prozac made me forget everything. So I'm like, I'm trying to think back about these relationships. And I'm like, okay, what did they do that I could make into content? <laughs> <laughs> oh well i'm really glad that you met someone that treats you well i'm yeah. just so happy because it, it sounds like things were pretty rough <laughs> yeah i was going through it but yeah nonetheless she persisted <laughs> <laughs> so what got you out of that though because i think a lot of people might be in a maybe some people listening are in the red flag factory yeah they maybe are thinking am i in the red flag factory if you're thinking you are, you are. Just FYI. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you have to think about it, then it is. Uh, I think that just it's so much easier to see it from the outside, you know? Um, but, like, when you're in that, I mean, there's so much gaslighting and there's so much, like, you almost want this person so bad that when they're like, okay, you need to leave me because I'm not good for you, you're like, but I've been doing all this. I've been trying to fix you so much. It's this just huge trauma bond. Yes. And then you still have like the endorphins of like love and all that kind of stuff. But it's also hate like sex. heightened by the fear of like, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, Allie, you lose, very similar. You lose a lot of family and you lose a lot of friends from those relationships. So it's scary. Yes. I mean, it's like starting yeah. from mm. z- ground zero. And you don't want to admit that you've been blind to it this whole time. You feel silly, but you shouldn't. And I think there's a lot of people who can't leave those relationships because of money, health, or so many other reasons. So if you are in one of those relationships, I just think that you should start doing one small thing for yourself every day because you'll come to a point where you have 10 things that you did for yourself today, and then you're going to be in a position where you're allowed to leave. That is really fucking good advice. That's amazing. That's great. (laughs) I'll expand one step forward. If you can find the bravery to even reach out and tell one friend, not what's wrong, but that you are not doing well, you don't have to expand on the, you don't have to put yourself in a position where you're, you fear the safety because your partner knows you said something, whatever, but to have one person who can just be available and knows that you're struggling, that's a huge step right there. Telling people to leave that situation is such a dumb thing to say to somebody. Somebody who's getting hit or cheated on knows that they should leave. 
it's not about that and it's so much deeper than that so just having patience with people who aren't yes. ready to leave that situation yet and not calling them dumb just calling them human and telling them that you will be there no matter what their decision is yeah yeah of, well no, of course not saying they're dumb i don't but know leave, you idiot. You're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well the thing is i also want to say like i don't want anyone to i am a huge just agency advocate because I've been in those situations and I did not realize how much advocacy or sorry, how much agency I did have. I blinded myself to my own agency. And of course there are complicated situations like the ones you just said, but we always have more agency than we think we do. Absolutely. I think to your point, to your point too, about like telling one friend to the, just like, Hey, I'm not like, I think even in, in any situation, when you like tell somebody else, you'll know then that, you have other people that you can rely on emotionally and other people that care on you, care about you, that the, this abusive person isn't the only person that exactly. you get all You're of your a love or connection or anything from. Like, yeah. this, you just show you that there's more people out there, even yeah. just platonically. I've, I've used my sister because like sometimes I have my own shame around things, but I have reached out to people to just say, hey, I am not doing well right now. I don't super want to talk about it, but like, I need you to know that I'm not doing so well right now. And it's like, it's just a lifeline to have there, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Just be gentle with people because you never know what they're yeah. going through. You of know? course. Yeah. Well, Allie, that was like, just really super, I didn't think we'd get from ass Twitter to, <laughs> to like some real brain. You, you, you asked me to talk about my past relationships. Yeah. I mean, I think that a big part. I too asked is you if you had gay sex this week. <laughs> Angry. That's what I asked you. You asked me if I ever hated somebody I dated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that was really important. Thank you for sharing all. Yeah, of absolutely. And it's okay not to hate your abuser right now. And it's okay to just leave that situation. You don't always have to say names because sometimes that's the scariest part of going mm. through those threats and stuff. Just do what's best for you. Wow. Thank you, Allie. Um, can I go to Maddie's sharing corner now? Let's or? go. <laughs> Let's go, Maddie. Listener, one of the best ways to support this podcast is to come see me live, okay? It, it's a really great way to just support the whole team and everything that we do here. So get on my text list or my email list. It's international, both of them. AshleyGavin.com. Go sign up, and I'll literally text you when I'm in your area. So you don't have to hear all these plugs. You can skip right by them. Don't even worry about your city. Just get on one of those two things, and I will let you know, okay? Because there's a lot of cities coming, and i just remaking this announcement over and over again. We all think it's annoying. You do. I do. Get on the text list, you piece of shit. I've never felt less like a real adult than what I'm about to say <laughs> compared to what you just said. I'm sorry, so no, Maddie, I should please do my little what, intro. What's going on? Much. We got our hall monitor over here. It's time for show and tell. It's Maddie's sharing corner. <laughs> it just truly, it truly couldn't be less of a real adult experience. It's like a <laughs> parody. So I'm in North Carolina right now. I drove down for Christmas. I drove down instead of flying because I had to take my pet rabbit, Wilbur. <laughs> here's here's maybe a little segment I'll start. No, that's a dog. I didn't have gay sex this week, but I, I'll, I'll tell you all the times I had the opposite of gay sex this week. <laughs> <laughs> this week, the opposite of gay sex that I had was pulling over during the middle of this road trip to feed Wilbur water out of a syringe so he would stay hydrated on the car ride <laughs> i have little bit syringes from the vet now listener water listener if you don't know wilbur you got to go to rabbit info dot finance <laughs> that is premier website for wilbur and maddie content you are such a good mom <laughs> you really are the best mom ever thank you <laughs> oh, I thought she was saying you're the best mom for ripping your rabbit out of a. Story. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh my god! And I was like, Ashley is my mother. Ashley's mommy. <laughs> Ashley is mommy. You and the rest of the internet are saying that it is time to do podcast with mommy. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know that's very sweet for saying. Yeah, he's here though. We made it down, but I was just, I was like, wow. There's some moments where you zoom out and you're like, how did we, how did we get here? <laughs> You know how long I mean? a drive was it? Oh, I'm sorry, Allie. Do you have a sexuality a sexuality of your rabbit? 
I thought you were going to ask if I had a sexuality, and I was like, I hope it's in there. <laughs> <laughs> we actually discussed this on a previous episode. I want to get him a girlfriend, but I was like, what if he's gay? And I'm trying to figure out how I, how I would Listener, deduce that right in. it. How do you tell if a neutered rabbit is gay? Wow, that's, we got to write the punchline to that joke. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, at your next open mic. How do you tell if a neutered rabbit is gay? Does he suck? Does he suck on the carrot? Does he suck on the carrot <laughs> or chew on the carrot? <laughs> <laughs> or do you hand him the carrot and he goes, "I'm a f- gay. <laughs> I'm not putting this f- carrot in my mouth. No homo." Or he eats the carrot and he's like, "No homo though. He's like, he makes no fucking no homo." This rabbit's personality. <laughs> the rabbit goes to a bodega and is like, "I would, I need a, a a bacon egg and paws." That that is a very niche joke, and I don't expect anyone to get that. <laughs> I'm laughing for sympathy. <laughs> the I, so here it is. You gotta add that to the soundboard. In, I am laughing for sympathy. I don't know what areas that'll hit, but definitely in New York, um, at bodegas, uh, toxically masculine men can't order a bacon egg and sausage because sausage is gay oh, so the, the vernacular on. the slang became bacon egg and paws this this That's upsets really me so much about uh men when like they talk about women's vaginas and they're always like oh roast beef this roast beef that and it's like, if roast beef isn't your choice of meat, then maybe sausages, but exactly. get out of here. I love Arby's. I love Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fuck it up. Arby's is an ally to the queer community. <laughs> um, so you're, you're feeding your rabbit water on your way down to North Carolina. Yeah, we took about, it was supposed to be a six hour drive. It took me about 16 hours because <laughs> he seemed unsettled. So I had to pull over to let him like, you know, no, get maybe, his footing and eat. Maybe because he was in the car for 16 f- hours. <laughs> You're like, I don't know. After hour nine, I just stopped every hour. It's like I wanted to be home. Wait, Maddie, it, it took you 16 hours? I, I, something like that. Am I doing the math right? I love so you did have lesbian sex this week. <laughs> <laughs> you f- like rabbits. <laughs> yeah, we stopped seven times. It took all day. It, it all led back to my mom eventually. <laughs> when I pulled up to her house. <laughs> But I didn't. I did not have gay sex. You, you were I did, afraid I of getting. Uh, you were afraid of the cops pulling you over as well. <laughs> You're in the South. You never know. Some of those laws are old. <laughs> Judgmental. I did have. <laughs> this is. <laughs> I I am on Hinge right now, and I did match with a really cute guy. But I'm realizing that I like don't know how to flirt because I'm looking back at our text conversation, and I talked to him about my favorite Wikipedia pages for like three days. <laughs> <laughs> it's sexy that uh, there's a lesbian out there that would think that is no, so fucking sure. hot they're, they're actually listening to this right now all of them do you think that would go over better with women i think <laughs> that women you just have to find a woman that is into what you have there's somebody out there of for course. everyone like you of are course. a 10 to somebody somebody is i don't love that <laughs> i don't like saying that to people though ali because like your are a 10 to somebody feels a little bit well, somebody's got to like it. But it, look, there's people who like having shit smeared all over, all over their face. Someone is down for you. But people Maddie, like all kinds of sick shit. You'll find your person. Can I give you some advice? Can I give you some advice for Please. you, Maddie? And then also some advice for the listener. Do not talk to someone for three days on the dating app. Go in, find out whether or not you like them, get the number, make the plan, and do not speak till you see them in person. Period. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Exactly. Whoa. It is tough when you're t- five states away from where they are, though. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like right oh, now. right. Yeah, yeah, But my advice is because you start to lose steam. It can become awkward. And you're running out of first date topics for the first date. And and that date chemistry is more important than the text chemistry. Yeah, this Ooh. might be a little bit sex positive. But I think you talk to them until you like want to hump them like dry hump them and that's the exact time you should want to go on a date you know what that's 
That's what that's why I love the dry humping thing though because that is <laughs> Me too. what I love. Uh, I, <laughs> I love live that. for it. <laughs> I love that as a litmus test though because I think sometimes I am on like a dating app and I'm like, would I let this person fully on my face and me right now? And I'm like, oh, I don't really know him that well, so then I don't swipe on him. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, of course you don't. But like, I had that thing where I'm like, if I would not fully like. If I'm not fully lubed up for this person right now, I guess I don't like them. And it's like, no, you should only have to, it, you work up to that. My, my litmus test is, well, swiping is a different story because it's not committal. You know what I mean? You don't have to message them. But if I'm messaging and this person doesn't make me smile, chuckle, like I think they're smart or interesting or funny within the first couple exchanges, I'm done. I'm not going mm. on, I'm, I don't go on test dates. If I get the heart flutter or the fanny flutter within those, I'm like, okay, this person's like kind of funny. Then I'll go, I'll, I'll get the number. Yeah. Um, Inflation Island, is just way too high. Inflation is so high that you cannot <laughs> afford to take everybody on a date. You know? that, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I, I, I mean, it's like such a waste of time. So Maddie, my advice to you would be to stop talking to this person until the date. Okay. Make them want, make them want and need you. <laughs> Here's my favorite Wikipedia page. And I just send them like the entry for a restaurant I think we should go to. <laughs> like a historic district restaurant. What about this Wikipedia page? That's really cool. That's the only way I can communicate. At Thursday at, at, at 7 p.m. How about this Wikipedia page? <laughs> I send them the Wikipedia page for kissing. Isn't this cool? <laughs> for the so he can find it later. <laughs> You're just sending him coordinates. You're mapping it out. That's so funny. Well, what? Tell me about this guy, Maddie, just very quickly. He's really cute. I think he's in a long distance open relationship, which is funny because I have a joke shitting on the Maddie, idea. Maddie, I that. just realized something. You're yes. our first ever truly single co host. Whoa. This is so exciting. Like, people are going to want to hear about your dates. Oh my God. Okay. Wait, that's very exciting. And by the way, the internet is officially like falling head over heels in love with you. I don't know if you've been reading the comments. I ha I ha I, I don't. <laughs> but that's so nice. I for my own mental health, it scares me. I just I'm like there's nothing even if it's bad. good, I'm Maddie, like I'm like I shouldn't I shouldn't soak. I shouldn't no, but even if it's good, I'm just like I'm like, oh I well I shouldn't I shouldn't change my conception of myself because a bunch of strangers think I'm cool. It's very, very nice. Is that the wrong approach? It's also over. I don't know, I'm sick in the head. <laughs> I am. All, I'm. I'm currently unmedicated, so don't listen to anything. I'm no, I do love it though. I don't want to sound. If you're listening to this, I genuinely so appreciate it. It's the coolest thing. The of positive all time. comments really mean a lot to me, particularly when they're detailed. Like mm. I listen to this. I'm an ER. I'm gonna cry. I'm an ER nurse, and I listen to your podcast uh, on my way to work, or like while I'm, oh. you know that that kind of thing. Where I can really imagine. Wait, that is funny. That sorry, I don't mean to cut off with the, with the idea of someone playing that in the ER to get them through the day, and then <laughs> this is the last thing someone hears before they die. <laughs> They're doing CPR, and, I should... <laughs> and then what's up, bottom nation? Uh, but, <laughs> but like, that's the type of stuff. I mean, it's really nice when people tell me I'm funny, but it's like the specific, and also like people say really heavy things too, like your pod saved my life or your pod helped me come out. I love those, but the ones I love the most are where I can imagine you listening to it and mm. really feel how it's connected to your day. That really moves me. Is your uh, love language it, words of affirmation? Duh. Oh, you go. <laughs> Allie, I'm, I'm sure you get a fuck ton of... Or is everyone just trying to have sex with you? No. Yeah, no, how do you no. deal with your DMs? Um, I don't. I think that if anyone, like I answer most of my DMs where people are like, your wife is so hot. And I'm like, yes, absolutely. But I think I've created a pretty strong boundary of, this is actually something that me and my wife talked about the other day is like, I don't get why people cheat because to me, it's so hot of me that like people want to be with me, but like they have absolutely no chance. Like that's so hot. <laughs> to me, you know, <laughs> there is something talk to you if, if you know the people want your partner, but you're the one who gets them. Uh, it's like, yeah. Ooh, oh, baby, that turns go. me on so much. Yeah, that's that rocks. When, when yeah. people are attracted to my partner, that mm -hmm. turns me on so mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so much. Me too. I think that's like the hottest thing is faithfulness can be so sexy if you guys would try it the fuck out. <laughs> Um, that was very like that was that was very like youth pastor like you know you know what's actually yeah. sexy staying faithful <laughs> get on your knees 
for Jesus. Oh, you want to get nailed? You know who else got nailed? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? I feel like he was like the first train. What is it? The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Thank you. That's funny. I've never I'll take heard all that. Three of the first them. train. Um, I'll take all three. Well, Maddie, I just want you to know that people love you. Thank Maddie, you. I, I want to hear a little bit about why oh, if, you're, if you're if you're if you're feeling comfortable about talking about why you haven't let go of your are you saving it your lesbian virginity wait no pause just for very... a second i just want to say for the listener at home when i said ali's hosting it was a bit I oh my laughing. god you guys the please don't I'm... cancel ashley <laughs> oh i didn't even hear what you said that's the only reason i didn't oh, laugh i, I, went, I wasn't I, like I, hurt by it yeah that's you hilarious. fucking bitch why didn't you laugh at my hosting <laughs> no i like i love, <laughs> I, love <my> job. <laughs> I love when we get into an episode and the chemistry is so good that everybody's hosting which is mm. just a conversation um but anyway go on maddie answer ali's host question oh no i i've never really been into like casual sex like, I think I really enjoy sex when I have, I don't have to be in love with the person, but when I have some kind of like connection with them and like, I've just, I just get a little, a little nervous around it. I don't even know. So like, I'm not closed off to it, but I just haven't, I also don't know how to, um, <laughs> here's something I was like talking to a friend about yesterday is that I was like, the way that straight women talk to each other, like the way that we just like casually, we, I, I don't know, what I'm, what I'm talking to straight women is like, that like you give each other compliments and you're like, I love you so much. You're literally so fucking hot. And I would bend you over this table and f- you right uh, now. Allie, Allie and I'm like, Colbert, okay, Allie so Colbert now has a bit like that. And it's so funny. Oh, does she really? Yeah, okay, so but funny. then it's like, okay, but now I'm like, okay, so now I want to flirt with women. And I'm like, I can't tell if we're, every time I message a girl on Hinge, I'm like, you're so cute. I'm like, she's on Hinge, Maddie. That is how you know. <laughs> You fucking no, no, idiot. I don't know, but I just she is feel on like hinge. I'm being She's like, flirting with you. She is on a dating app. <laughs> She's like, Come I want to scissor. Maddie. Maddie's like, she wants to do arts and crafts. And that's crazy. <laughs> it's Maddie, crazy. that is so insane to me that you're literally on it. You're not talking about a friend in comedy or like a friend that you went and got coffee from. You're like, oh, is this a date? You're literally on a dating app. You're like, is this flirting? Oh. You piece of shit. But I think it's so. <laughs> I think it's such a cool thing that sex can mean so many things to different people. Like sex to you is Shut something. <laughs> sex to you is something that's like, you're like, oh my God, I'm like, I want it to be like emotional and not in first date. And then there's other people who are like, I would f- anything with a hole. A direct quote from me <laughs> 50 minutes ago. <laughs> Maddie, you need to like, you need to, uh, I want to get you laid so bad. <laughs> I feel like the longer you wait, you're going to like, you're going to overhype it, you know? And then it's going to be like just it's seven already, hours. Maddie's already, it's already overhyped. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I joined a gay podcast before I slept with the, I mean. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Should we do our fists to the future? Some butt plugs? Let's do it. All right. Uh, <laughs> Allie, what are you working on? Where can people find you besides the open mics? People can find, don't find me at the open mics. <laughs> you can find me at Allie underscore The Bel-Airs. Pittsburgh Improv in the side room running five on Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Allie underscore Bel- <laughs> <laughs> But actually, no. Thank you so much. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever said this, but I'm actually nervous for people to come. You know, I like kind of want to do it on my own first and make sure I can make the homophobes laugh before I can make the people who I know <laughs> find me funny laugh. Yes. Yes. Uh, and then I'll because, know I have a future. Because it, look, you don't have to make everybody laugh, but there is some percentage that is optimal. And when people are always like, you must hate performing for straight people. I'm like, no, no. dude, I want to make everyone laugh. Right. I yeah. think that TikTok, you get into this niche and it's like, I know I can make uh, your purple haired cousin laugh, you know, like I, I know that she relates. <laughs> yeah. I know the that she relates to in North Carolina. Right. She's, <laughs> I know I'm funny to her, but yeah. So everyone, so yeah, stand up, hopefully in the future, maybe Ash Gavs can give me a little guidance there. I would love to. And Maddie is also an extremely talented comedian. If you haven't seen. Oh, uh, stop. And Maddie, I would love that from you as well. Maddie's got a set on comedy central on YouTube that you can go and watch. Oh, huge. I will do that, man. Yeah. She's oh, thanks very so much. funny. Um, Maddie, what about you? Uh, what are you plugging? At Maddie Tweener on Instagram and YouTube. I'm going to be dropping a half hour special at some point in this year. So if you want to just be in the know for that. And I got my little Substack essays that I write about gender and the internet and what's going on in my brain. They're a fun time. And then Allie is on the text list. So you get on the text <laughs> list, you piece of shit. I'm on the text list, and honestly, I've been going around Pittsburgh stealing people's phone and putting them on the text list. 
Actually, I'm going to start writing graffiti on bathroom stalls for a good time call. And it's going to be this. For a good time, text tour to 877. <laughs> they get to the show, they're like, well, this is actually a really good time. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a great time. Um, seriously, though, because uh, tour dates are always in flux. Things move, things change. I'm not always booked out. You know, sometimes I add things last minute. So it's really helpful for you to be on it. And then guys, support this. Patreon.com slash WHDS. One dollar goes a long way. Uh, let's get Maddie a, a certificate for their buddy to get on the plane um, <laughs> so that we don't have to be driving. Give Maddie a raise. Patreon.com slash WHDS. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for, li- thanks. Thanks for listening, guys. Patreon.com slash WHDS to support this podcast, to support all of the free work that you see like the clips, this podcast, the YouTube vlogs and stuff like that. All of that costs a lot and uh, you can help by donating just a dollar and you get access uh, to all different types of stuff. Um, so including bonus episodes, up to four bonus episodes a month, patreon.com slash WHDS and sign up for my ticket alerts and stuff like that. Okay, gay thought, gay thought, because there's only audio on this. I'm going to do some, I'm gonna do some gay, gay ASMR. Are you guys ready? Okay, it's not the best gay ASMR I've ever done, but here we go. This is the sound of... My nail clippers. Safe sex. I'll take care of you. This is the sound of my anti-inflammatory drugs because I have chronic pain. Do you have chronic pain, queer? It's (laughs) anti-inflammatory. Okay, this is the sound. Okay, this doesn't make much sound, but this is a tube of fake blood. That's a tube of fake blood that my main main had me hold in her pocket because she she works in theater. So fake blood. <laughs> this is two different drinks that I got today because I couldn't decide. This is a matcha. And this is a cold brew. Have a good week. Listener, this podcast is sponsored by Calm. For listeners of the show, Calm is offering an exclusive offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash gay. I know this is a little tricky to listen to, so if you don't see the banner on the YouTube, go to calm.com slash gay for 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library. That's calm.com slash gay.